بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه أما بعد كتاب الزكاة شرح زاد المستقنع Continuing إن شاء الله in with the كتاب of الزكاة We'll be resuming from line 136, which is الزَّكَاةُ We mentioned the shurut of a zakat. We know the shurut of a zakat. And one of the conditions of the zakat, we said, is حَوَلَانْ الْحَوْلِ حَوَلَانْ الْحَوْلِ Which is to have a whole year having that wealth in someone's hand in saving. When it goes beyond the nisab. Hawalan al hawli, as a condition we said, will not apply on nataj al sa'ima wa ribhu al tijar, whatever it comes as a product derived from the cattle or, or ribhu al tijar, the profit made in the business as, you know, transaction business or sale business, etc. So that's and the harvest. So the harvest when we're talking about thimar. So that will not wait for hawalan al hawl. That condition will not apply here. So the condition of the whole year to be, you know, fulfilled as to have the saving for a whole year, that's only for, we said for a zakat al naqdain, uh, mainly for the zakat or a sa'ima, uh, but nataj al sa'ima. وَرِبْحُ التِّجَارَةِ etc. That we already defined it. We also talked about a deal, the debt. When someone has a loan that he loaned someone, it will be, uh, uh, someone will pay zakat on it, the owner of the, of the loan, or the one who's in debt, will he pay? We also mentioned that. Then, uh, the, we said, does the uh, or do the ages of the uh, animals will include will be have to be considered? He said no. قَالَ وَإِنْ مَلَكًا يُصَابًا صِغَارًا عَقَدَ حَوْلُهُ حِينَ مَلَكَ The from the time he get any animal, you know, and then it reach the uh, minimum requirement for payment of the zakat. That's started from the time he he owned them. وَإِنْ نَقَصَ النِّصَابُ فِي بَعْضِ الْحَوْلِ أَوْ بَاعَهُ وَأَبْدَلَهُ بِغَيْرِ جِنْسِهِ لَا فِرَارًا مِنَ الزَّكَاةِ انْقَطَعَ الْحَوْلِ Now, the type of the wealth that you have, if it changed during the year, in any condition, selling or changing it to another nature of wealth, not doing it in a way for someone that he's trying to avoid to pay the zakat, then the hawl will stop there. The hawl, the time, the calculation, of the period of the zakat will stop when he changed, you know, he sold, you know, for example, he said he has 40 goat or, uh, and he sold like, you know, 10 before one month of the uh, completion of the year. That 10, it reduced the minimum requirement of the zakat. Therefore, he would not have to, uh, to pay the zakat. And the zakat will be again calculated from the time he reached the, the level of the zakat, the, the minimum requirement. He didn't do it in a way to avoid paying the zakat. That's a major sin. وَإِنْ أَبْدَلَهُ بِجِنْسِهِ بَنَا عَلَى حَوْلِهِ وَإِنْ أَبْدَلَهُ بِجِنْسِهِ If he changed part of what he had with the same uh, the same type of animals. For example, he had goats, he sold, you know, and he exchanged them with the stronger or younger. But anything that he's swapped them or like uh, exchanged them, which he will have the same thing that he has before, but different. So he will continue from the, from the, from where he started. He will not restart or reset the counting of the year. And this is all we uh, mentioned last time. Do you have any question uh, concerning the past classes in a zakat? Right. 
I will continue and if you have a question later in Ibn Allah, we can do it. قال يقول المصنف وتجب الزكاة في عين المال وتجب الزكاة في عين المال وتجب الزكاة في عين المال This is uh, we mentioned already this masala we mentioned already this masala uh, the zakat tajibu is obligatory fi ayn al-mal fi ayn al-mal we're talking about the wealth itself the asset that someone has now when you th- uh, you, you you know you consider this uh, condition we say if there's another opinion who's saying otherwise yes that's why he said وَتَجِبُ الزَّكَاةُ فِي عَيْنِ الْمَالِ to confirm according to the author and the school of thought of the author that تَجِبُ فِي عَيْنِ الْمَالِ the other opinion قال تَجِبُ فِي الذِّمَّةِ وَاجِبَةٌ فِي الذِّمَّةِ وَاجِبَةٌ فِي الذِّمَّةِ is like it is an obligation on every individual who have the wealth to pay the zakat. Uh, the difference between them, the difference between them, the zakat here for them goes back to the mukallif. When talking about the ra'as al-mal, whatever have as initial investment, what the capital you have from the beginning, or the saving you have, or whatever cattle you have, the zakat is in the asset you have, regardless who owns this asset. For them, the zakat is on the person himself. So, for the first one, when we talk about the capital, the asset, okay? Regardless who owned the money, if as an orphan, he has to pay. If he's like a minor, he has to pay. Because the zakat is in the money, not, you know, related to the mukallaf. So the mukallaf, if it's related to the mukallaf, then we said the mukallaf, he has to reach the age of puberty, the minimum requirement, so he be accountable, so he give, because the zakat is ibadah. So this is the difference of opinion. An example, for example, to see the difference, uh, some of the scholars, they mention example. Someone has 40 shed, 40 goats. The zakat on 40 goat is one shed, one goat. Or 40 lamb is one lamb. If the zakat fi ayn al-mal, if we take the opinion, the zakat is concerning what he has as asset, 40 goats. He didn't pay the first year, the second year, the third year. The fourth year, he, he has kind of remorse, he regret, he repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he want to pay the zakat. If we go with the opinion that the zakat fi ayn al-mal, said you have to pay the zakat, on the investment you have, on the asset you have. So he going to say, okay, so I have 40. The first year I didn't pay, how much he owe? One shed. The second year, he will have, if he paid that one shed, 39. So he doesn't, he's not at the minimum requirement, so he doesn't pay. The third year, the same here, 39, so he will not pay. So for the past three years, he's going to pay only one zakat. That's what he has as a debt. If we say, no, you are the responsible on paying zakat. So then, in the first year, he was responsible to pay the zakat. How many he had? 40, one shed. The second year, he was the responsible. How many he has, literally in his hand, 40, responsible 40, pay another one. The third year, the same. 
So if you go with the second Ayn al-Mal, he will have to pay three shirts. Why? Because he's the responsible on it. Not about the money. The money increases or decreases. It's you who didn't pay it, so you have to pay what you have missed. That's the difference between them. So you see, subhanAllah, uh, the opinion sometimes it goes and it has a lot of branches and a lot of, uh, you know, different impact. Like who's going to be responsible, who's not. And this is, you know, khilaf or mashur. Now, according to the school of thought here is the Ayn uh, al So talking about the uh, money and the uh, evidence, the evidence at the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala fi arba'een shat in 40 shat, one shat wallah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala وفي أموالهم حق للسائل والمعلوم في ظرفية في and in their money is due is the right to pay for uh, the needy one so في ظرفية in their assets in their wealth so which is mean like the obligation is related to the wealth to the asset not the obligation related to the uh, mukallaf to the individual, to the person who owned them. And I mentioned to you last time the difference of opinion and who uh, from among the scholars defend the opinion. But the Jumhur goes with the, uh, the, the, uh, the opinion of the author. Allah Ta'ala But in reality, um, these two opinions, you know, in some ways they complement each other. So it depends on the situation. It depends on the situation of the person. It depends on the case. Because sometimes uh, uh, it depends. There's someone in certain society, he might be reprimanded, kind of being punished because he did something that he's been causing fitna around. Unless there's an opinion already prevailing in that society. But as a fatwa, it might be someone, you know, also sometimes to help someone pay for his zakat. Someone who's far, he never paid his zakat. If he never paid his zakat and you want to help him to repent, and this is, subhanAllah, there is sometimes in the sharia, that's why I say the difference of opinion between the scholar is a mercy. It's not a fitna. The difference of opinion between the, the people, the mass, that's what caused the problem and the fitna. But between the scholars is a mercy. Someone orphan in a society where there's no this cohesion that exists among the member of the society. And you have an orphan who has an inheritance. If you're going to keep paying his zakat, then when he's going to grow up, his zakat will be like what he has as inheritance is being gone. When especially the wali that he's, uh, you know, in charge of his own money, he's not investing it. So I say here the opinion to have in a dhamma. So he said his money, save it for him. When he get old, then he take care of your money. He pay his own zakat. This is one opinion which is valid and justified as one of the opinions. So it really, it depends. It depends. But it's good to know this both opinion because the, the sharah, the, the musannaf, then later on, look what he said. Qala, وَتَجِبُ الزَّكَاتُ فِي عَيْنِ الْمَانِ وَلَهَا تَعَلُّقٌ بِالذَّمَّةِ but he said also, it really has ta'alluq. A ta'alluq is mean like related. It's really closely associated to someone's responsibility. You cannot say, oh, this, I own this, so the zakat concerned this. Okay, who going to take care of it? Who going to pay it? 
do you have, uh, you know, you have to have the right intention. So the dhamma also is included. That's why they are very close to each other. That's why I said it depends sometimes on the cases, especially in the time that we live in. طيب في إن هي قال ولا هي تعلق بالذمة تعلق بالذمة is like also someone he's in responsibility he's like has this you know responsibility commitment toward the Sharia toward the law Allah the law of Allah subhanahu wa taala to have that they get observe it the way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa taala. Uh, the scholar, they say things like it requires intention, of course. Someone, for example, his father didn't pay Zakat, his son or his daughter, they want to pay on his behalf. He said, don't worry, I paid the Zakat for you. I said, it doesn't work because it was in the responsibility of the father to take care of that. He said, ibadah is a worship. It's not like, you know, I want to, you know, remove a burden on you, I will take care of it. It's like someone, you know, tired, he will sleep. You know, he knows, for example, a dear friend. And he wake up in the morning, he says, subhanAllah, I forget. Yesterday I was so tired, I slept and didn't pray Isha. So don't worry, I prayed for you, the Isha. I knew you were very tired. Would you accept this? The same thing for the zakat. That's ta'allukun bil dhamma. It has a responsibility. Wa ta'allukun bil dhamma, you know, not only responsibility because it's a worship. I mean, uh, so the people who pay the zakat, when they pay it, it's like they feel like a celebration. They fulfill the worship. They make a lot of dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it. They're happy that they did it. And they can see that increase, that zakat, within their own selves. And they see it in the happiness of the people they received it. Or there, subhanAllah, it has a taste. And that is the ta'allaq of them. That's, you know, part of the responsibility. So even the author saying this is concerned the assets, but doesn't mean that someone you know, whatever asset or, you know, whatever asset, you know, you just pay it and someone is not responsible of it. And which is uh, clarify more this uh, aspect that he added or condition. قال ولا يعتبر في وجوبها إمكان الأداء ولا بقاء المال ولا يعتبر في وجوبها إمكان Let's see. إمكان الأداء. And it's not the condition of the obligation of the zakat to have, let's say, إمكان الأداء that at the time of the payment you have the ability, the access of the money to pay it. Say, okay, say, you know. I have, uh, I have my zakat is to pay like, you know, $500. But now I don't have access to the account. My account is blocked or like this saving, I cannot touch them and things. I said, it doesn't mean that you are exempt from the zakat if you don't have the ability to pay. You have a debt. The person, he's a friend of yours. Someone you trust, he came to you, he told you, you know, uh, I cannot pay you. You know, I have some, you know, special circumstances. Just give me more time. Say, okay, so he, I give him more time and I say, all oh, that money is mine, right? Yes. So pay Zakat on it. Don't say, I don't have it now. He didn't give it to me. Say, do you trust this person? Yes. And he's not denying it. Yes. Therefore, you do not have in Kanul Ada. You do not have the ability to pay it at that time. For example, someone has, we're going to see the Ibel, uh, the camels, uh, their zakat, 
you have able the zakat is to pay, for example, two shed, two goat. He said, I don't have two goats. I have only uh, camels. He said, then you don't pay? <laughs> so, وجوب الزكاه لا يسقط بعدم امكان التمكن من الاداء as he saying here قال ولا يعتبر في وجوبها ولا يعتبر في وجوبها امكان الاداء so we do not consider in the payment in the obligation to payment of the zakat the fact that someone he had the access to the money or they have the ability to pay it. As long as he has saving, and this saving completed the year, and this saving is at equal or uh, superior to the nisab, then he has to pay it. The second one also, that it will not be a motive or an excuse to not pay the zakat, which is qala, uh, ولا بقاء المال ولا بقاء المال someone he has $5,000 and he completed the year he has to pay 2.5% just after the completion of the, the howl of the year he has a big expense he paid the whole $5,000 he said that just you know spend them I don't have even money to pay the zakat. You say, no, you have to pay the zakat. Because the zakat was due after that year. Whatever happened to the assets that you have after that year, you know, is not considered. Why? Because the zakat, it was due after the year. You, after the year, and one day, you have sold things or you have, you know, or things happen to whatever you have, the zakat is still an obligation. Yeah. So at that point, can somebody borrow money to pay the zakat? If you spend 5000 already, and, and you have to fulfill the obligation, can you borrow somebody else to pay the zakat and pay the zakat? Borrowing is halal or haram? Borrowing is haram. That's it. He has to pay them. Of course, not steal. Stealing will be paying zakat with stealing money that will not. Yes, he has to pay. And if he will not be able, so here uh, the author, Rahimullah, is sharing with us the fact that the zakat it will be obligatory. But does it mean that he has to pay it then? So it's like he still have a debt. For example, he said, My zakat to be paid is a thousand dollars. Now that I spent everything, I don't have it. But $1,000 is a debt between me and Allah. Well, so that $1,000, which is mean here, the author he want to tell us, if you, someone for certain circumstances, you lost that money, I say, my zakat is worth $1,000. Now that I lost the money, I'm not going to pay the zakat. Because the money that I had, that the zakat, uh, which is going to be paid on that money, is lost. So the sharia here tell him, the hukum here tell him, no. You dispose for that money for all these years. The zakat in on what you have that money for the, for the whole year. And you had the ability and the choice and the free, the freedom to do whatever you want with that zakat. So don't hold the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when this right of Allah is the right for those poor when you lost the money. If you lost them before the completion of the zakat, no one will ask you for it. But after the completion of the year, that's, it becomes a debt. Any question? طيب ولا يعتبر في وجوبها إمكان الأداء ولا بقاء المال والزكاة كالدين في التركة والزكاة كالدين في التركة. The zakat is like the 
is like the addainu, the debt in the tarika, in the inheritance. The tarika in the estate that will be, you know, the asset. The estate of or the legacy of someone was after he passed away. The zakat is going to be treated in this case as treating and dealing with the debts. So the first thing from the estate that is going to be, uh, you know, fulfilled from the will in the way of the Sharia, someone's inheritance, the first thing that they spend or they take away from it is for the preparation for the funeral and everything that will be taken from hysterica. After that, you pay all the debts. If he has, for example, mahar that he didn't pay for his wife, he's going to be taken away. If he has debts for people due, de due debts, he didn't pay, it will be taken away. Then the zakat, which is also debt, will be treated and be treated in this category. So the distribution of the as, uh, estate happened after deducting all this. That's the meaning what he said. Was zakatu kaddaini fit tarika. Wa darilu darika, qawluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. اقضوا الله فالله أحق بالوفاء. اقضوا fulfill your commitment with Allah. pay what you have as a debt with Allah because Allah أحق بالوفاء. He's the one that he need to be, you know, fulfilled with him the commitment. The first to be fulfilled the commitment with is Allah سبحانه وتعالى. قال this is وزكات مقدمة كذلك على الوصي also the will because the will he has everyone has in his will if he has uh, inheritance you know if he has uh, ما شاء الله a big estate after him the will which is someone in Sharia he has to give up to the third the debts, the zakat and the debts will be deducted before that. Now we have a case here. We have the case of the person who usually pay his zakat. Person who usually pay his zakat. Then he died you pay the zakat for him. That's the debt of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if someone intentionally he didn't pay the zakat and he died, will we will be paying the zakat for him after his death will be accepted or not? According to the author, according to the madhab, it does. But will he be rewarded? That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will. Because he didn't want to pay it. Why according to the author, the school, the Hanbali school here, why go back to the obligation of the zakat on what? On Ayn al-Mal. So regardless on the one who intended or didn't intend it, we have to pay the zakat on the, on the money. Now he's going to be rewarded, that's in the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other scholars, they said, لا تبرأوا به ذمته. He will be still accountable for it because the payment of the zakat requires intention and this person, he intended, he has the intention to not pay it. وهذا قول ابن القيم وقال ابن القيم رحمه الله إنها لا تبرأ منها ذمته لا تبرأ منها ذمته 
ولو أخرجوها من تركته لأنه مصر على عدم الإخراج فكيف ينفعه عمل غيره فكيف ينفعه عمل غيره He's saying he will not be you know, free from accountability here why he will still be guilty of what he has done because he was insisting to not pay it so he's going to be accountable for it and the action of someone on be on his behalf it will not benefit him because the action require intention and his intention was to not pay the zakat But the the قول الحسن the 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 opinion of the author is very strong opinion. So the opinion goes this way: Is the zakat need to be taken on the money? But the part of the person who died and he didn't pay, will he be rewarded or accountable? That's in the hand of Allah. Actually, he will be accountable according to Ibn Qayyim's statement. And his, his statement and opinion is based on the qawa'ad uh, of the Sharia, on the principle of the, of the Sharia. Any question? I supported what I said a little while ago. You mentioned about the uh, camel and the sheep. You know, you say, well, camel, you gotta get two sheep. And he's like, yeah. Now, let's say the person doesn't have it. Can you pay in the form of a cat? Yes. He can convert a camel into sheep because they had, you know, the worker. We're going to collect the zakat that will go into kind of the accountability, kind of accounting. He said, you know, I have, don't have two, sheets, uh, two uh, goats or two sheets. He said, okay, you can give me this small camel and I give you exchange. This is equal to five, you know. I'll take two, I'll give you back three. So it's, it's flexible and it's no one at that time. But someone cannot make it an excuse. I don't have, so I'm not going to pay. Say the fact that you don't have access to the money or you don't have what you're going to pay, uh, you have to pay. Someone, for example, he has, he's saving gold and he doesn't want to touch the gold. And he said it's a you know, secure things and, uh, you know, there's a commitment that you cannot touch it for this number of years. When I get it back, I said, I said no, you have to pay. Even if we don't have access, you know, you pay in, in cash. Yeah. Any other question? Uh, if the person is not known, if the person he doesn't know him at all, or if he goes through an organization, through um, through groups, through um, uh, a center, he will say that he is a kid. For those who are receiving the money, to know where to put it. Because the zakat, how to spend it, it has a condition. Well, for a needy person, that's someone who doesn't know at all. I mean, he will give him without telling him. But if he don't want to tell him, there's no, uh, you know, objection for that. Now, it is kind of, let's say, kind of obligatory to say zakat if someone you know. 
Because the one you know, don't let him think that you're giving him like something, a gift. Because if this person is going to buy for you a gift that you spoil that zakat, that becomes like riba. He said, oh, he gave me a gift. I'm going to make for him a dinner. So he make for you the dinner because of the money you gave him. That money is his right. And he think that you, you know, making like a great uh, act of generosity. So when someone gave, he said, you know, this is not from me. This is easy zakat. So he will take it, say, you know, may Allah accept from you. And when people, they give it without saying, the other person, he will be shocked. They said, oh, he remembered me. He's so nice. He is and he is and he is. And then we're going to get gift for the person. They're going to be treated. Anything, anything that will be coming from that zakat as action of, uh, you know, of... Um, of tabjil or action of, uh, you know, uh, any of the type of the action that I mentioned, that will be spoiling the zakat. Because it's haram to take advantage of something that you are obligatory to, that it belongs to the person that you gave to him. See the difference? It belongs to him. And he thinks that you're making a favor on him. It wasn't a favor. It's Allah who sent him his money and the one that pays a cat is like a messenger. Like a mailman. Imagine, you know, the mailman comes and he brings you a big box. That's a great thing. And you start to hug him, say, thank you, this is what I was expecting and things. And you think, like he said, he will be looking at you like, what happened to you? I'm just taking the box, get it to your address. Right? Do you, the mailman, you give him like, you know, gift and get him things because of what he's giving you, right? I mean, it's nice to give him a gift, of course, I'm not saying. But this is an example for us to see. So it's like, subhanAllah, you have a message, a letter, you take it to someone. Tell him, this is from me. So the person is going to uh, thank you for being a good messenger and trustworthy because you get you know him the what he what is being sent to him but it's big difference to give him something and it's like coming from you that is going to have a consequences is going to spoil that payment of the zakat so saying to the person that's why i said the one you don't know you're not going to see this person He's not going to prepare something for you. And this person, you say, if he didn't, I mean, I don't know this person. If he give it to me, it must be his zakat. Making dua for him, alhamdulillah, that's a great thing. But especially for the relatives, the close one, they need to know it's a zakat. Because the relatives, when I say close one, I meant mainly relatives. Because the relatives, they feel it like, subhanAllah, a debt in their neck. They have to make something to give it back. And that's already, subhanAllah, it's a burden on them when that money belongs to them. Any question? I'm a little confused here. From what I don't understand, okay, what you're just explaining is better. What doesn't make me understand is that let's say a wife, for example, has a big business and she's a very successful person and she has employed her husband who is not able to make that kind of money. And now he has to, she, she has to pay the tax. Is the husband also entitled to get the tax if he is not able to make the ends meet? Because he is the man of the house who is supposed to take care of the family. Okay. Number, one. Number two, if he were to give the zakat, I mean, if he were to buy the food from the zakat, would that not contradict what you just said? 
No. That's totally different. You're given as a very special case here. And we're talking about, you know, uh, for example, yourself and you have uh, a cousin. That cousin need to know that he's the kid. Because the cousin, nothing has to do with you to, to feed you, right? Yeah. Or to take in charge of you. Right. Now, when you come to the case that you gave, the woman, if she has enough money and her husband he cannot afford, as you explain it, she had the option to pay for him the zakat. It's not an obligation. She has to option because she can pay to a needy person other than her husband. Rather. Now, if it happened that she paid it to her husband, her husband, he has the obligation to provide, not for her, for the whole house. So when he got that money, he become kind of rich, so he has. So he's going to get back to his responsibility because he has that money. Nothing have to do with his wife paying him the cash. So he get back to responsibility because we are in one circle here. So it's like, you know, he would not say to his wife, will you pay your zakat for me so I can pay for your food? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it is okay. I mean, it was okay for her to keep the zakat and by obligation he has to continue to provide. It's paying the zakat is not an obligation for her to give it to her husband. She can keep the zakat, give it to whom he, she wants, and the husband tell him, you're not providing for me. But as being merciful, and she's nice, she's going to burden him. If she will not pay the zakat, she will pay for herself and maybe pay for him also to be provided. Wada. So it's not an obligation for her to pay for him. It's an option. That's what I'm saying. I say. So she can hold on her zakat to give it to someone else, and he still obligated him to provide. So if she gives the zakat and he brings food, that food is her right, even though he borrowed from her money, because the money, when it transfer, it change, um, uh, it change identity. The case of the zakat, when someone is say, tell him, Salaam alaikum wa alaikum salam, said, uh, this is for you. You see, so the person is say, this is for me. May Allah give you and give you. So they are cousin, right? This is forbidden. Why? Because he thinks that you make, right? Now, the case that you're talking about is totally different case in the Sharia. Money you know, you give it to someone. You say, this is a zakat. Everybody knows zakat. When you give it here, it changes identity. The money changes identity. It becomes the property of the husband. It ceases to be zakat when the man got it in his hand. Now, if he's going to pay food or anything, and she's going to use it and eat from it or buy food, grocery, and cook it, nothing has to do with that process of the zakat. This is clear. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he entered one time and they had food. And he was going to eat. They told him, Ya Rasulullah, this is Sadaqah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is prohibited for him to Sadaqah. Sadaqah to who? Qala li barira. Qalu lahu, Sadaqah li barira. This is Sadaqah was given to Barira. Barira, the servant of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the, the companion. The Prophet sallallahu sat and he started to eat. What he said? Qala hiya laha sadaqa walana hiba. For her is a sadaqa and from Barira to us is a gift. The identity changed. That's why someone, you know, you have the money in your pocket, said, who told you maybe this money was stolen? 
I said, that's not my concern. I get it with halal. So when I get the money, the circuit from where to get it to my pocket, it was halal. Before that, it's in the hand or in, in the burden of the one who had the money. So the money, when it circulates, every time it comes to your hand, it changes identity. So the identity is not labeled on the note. The identity of the money is in your intention and the way how you get it. That's why in the question, in the Day of Judgment, the money have two questions. How did you get it and how did you? Nothing have to do with the money. How and how? Intention and way of doing. Well, so if he, she give him this, this is a kid. The money that he has in his hand for him is a kid. When he bought food and he gave it back, is an obligation to serve, uh, give to his family. Not zakat anymore. The example that I gave is different. You are my friend, you, you come and you give the say to your friend, say, this is, take this. He's gonna feel so, so, you know, he's gonna be overwhelmed. He's gonna take part of the zakat and buy for you a gift. Tell you, this is a gift from me. So that's a gift. It's been coming from the zakat. Because he wasn't going to give you a gift if he didn't give him that money, right? But if you tell him this is a zakat, you make him so happy, he's going to buy for his family things. And he said, well, I, because of the glad tidings and because of his honesty and to give me, I want to give him a gift. That is halal gift. Well, that. قال المصنف رحمه الله باب زكاة بهيمة الأنعام In some of the books باب زكاة السائمة يقول المصنف رحمه الله تجب تجب في إبل وبقر وغنم تجب في إبل وبقر وغنم Let's talk about uh, first بهيمة الأنعام What is بهيمة الأنعام بهيمة is animal from الإبهام بهيمة قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في سورة المائدة آية نمبر 1 وحلت لكم بهيمة الأنعام and بهيمة is like because it doesn't speak it doesn't speak to the human being they speak between themselves you don't understand them so whatever they say is mubhamun. You cannot, you cannot, uh, you know, have a codification on what they say. So that's why I call it behima. Behimatul An'am, which is known in the English, the cattle, the cattle. Are three categories in the Sharia. Ibilun wa baqarun wa ghanam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned them in Surah Al-An'am. Talking about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided. قال أولم يروا إن سورة يسين أن خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala carefully created them for the humankind. They are, and in Surah Al-An'am, قال وَمِنَ الضَّأْنِ اثْنَيْنِ وَمِنَ الْمَعْزِ اثْنَيْنِ قُلْ آذَّكَرَيْنِ حَرَّمَ أَمْرُ اثْنَيْنِ then قال وَمِنَ الْإِبِلِ اثْنَيْنِ وَمِنَ الْبَقَرِ اثْنَيْنِ the three categories are camels, cows, and and ghanam. Ghanam include al, uh, the sheep and the goats. The camel are all types of camel known. Well, they have, you know, the, the Salam, uh, the, the one in the Asia part, they have two, and one who has only one. That's both, they, they under the count of the zakat. <laughs> Al-Baqar include the Baqar that known, and then types of Baqar they called Al-Jawamis, which is very known in Egypt. Jamusa. And bull, those, those family. Wal-Ghanamu tashmalu al-Ma'izu wal-Ba'nu. Al-Ma'iz, the goat, wal-Ba'n, the lambs, the lamb. وَلَا يَدْخُلُ فِيهَا الضَّبْيُ الضَّبْيُ is a, an animal, subhanAllah, middle between the uh, goat and the deer. You know, you see the deer that we have everywhere here? This one is the small, they call it uh, in, in some language, الغزال. غزال. هو كذلك الضبيو. Is a small deer, but it's very, you know, uh, more nicer and uh, smaller. That's, it's not included in a zakat. This type of ghazal they extract from, subhanAllah, glands in the, around the stomach, the uh, musk. Abdabi. The evidence is the Qur'an and the hadith of Anas ibn Malikin. Uh, in the book or the letter that Abu Bakr sent, and in this letter, قَالَ هَذِهِ فَرِيضَةُ الصَّدَقَ الَّتِي فَرَضَهَا النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ This is the farida, the obligation that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in the sadaqah that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, you know, faradha, obligated. And in the hadith mention al-ghanam wal-ibl. In the hadith mention al-ghanam, lamb, goat, and camels. About the cows, it's also mentioned in another hadith. The cattle, we can classify them in three categories. Uh, four categories, I'm sorry. So, three categories based on their types. Four categories based on their use. Because based on the use, so the zakat require two steps. The first step is this animal is included in the zakat. Because the example say, for example, someone has gold and silver, and diamonds. They say, which type of my saving that I have should I pay zakat? On which type? Say, gold and silver only. What about the diamond? Diamond, there's no zakat on it. In the animals, I have these animals. Which animal I have to pay zakat on it? you get the three categories that we mentioned. Type. Now that we have the step knowing the animals that uh, the zakat is obligatory on, the next question, you know, in any use, 
you have the uh, goat, you know, used uh, as you selling them. Are you going to pay zakat on them? So this is the four categories, the way how you use the cattle to know which type of zakat to pay, or if actually even if the zakat is obligatory on them or not. The first category, أن تكون عروض تجار. تكون عروض تجارة is that you have this cattle as product for sale. عروض you present them for sale. The zakat here is based on the profit that you make, so it's a business. So it's like you're going to have them as an inventory. So here, what you're going to take in consideration is the value of your inventory, not the number of the, of the animals you have. Value. So someone who's selling cattle his zakat is going to be based on the value of the cattle he has. It's like the inventory. So this is like, is going to be treated as urut tijar. The second category, the second category, it has two subcategories. You have the second category owned by a farmer. Let's say a farming you know, use for these cattle, which is going to treat them, get milk from them, make his, you know, cheese and things, and have, you know, to bring him more uh, animals. So that's the farming part. The first subcategory, I mean, the, the subcategory, we're going to have it based on what? Based on how you provide for their food. How you taking care of them. The first subcategory is sa'ima. The second subcategory, ma'lufa. A sa'ima is the cattle who's being fed, you know, naturally by the open land, the pasture land, the herbage from the grass. A grass that it grows without any investment or without any effort of anyone. Is subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, open land is whatever, uh, you know, the animal they go, they, they eat. That's what we call it, as saima What we call it, as saima A saima comes from, you let it, and the animal goes, eat, and dress, and comes back. Al-ma'lufatu is the one that the owner will buy food for it, buy grass, or he will uh, plant food, grass, and carrot, and prepare it, and take it to them, and everything. So he's investing the whole food. Is either with effort or with his own money. The first one you pay zakat on it. The second one, there's no zakat on it. What? Beautiful, isn't it? The thing that is eating the nature, you pay zakat on it. The thing that you feed, you don't pay zakat on it. The fourth category, or in our, you know, way of uh, uh, division, is the third. قال العوامل العوامل before they used to use the cattle for transportation, like camels. So here, for example, you have you know cars as a cabs. People before they have camels, they rent them, 
they use them to, you know, to, for transportation, for delivery. So those, they're going to be used as, as a business tools. Therefore, the zakat will be paid on the profit generated from the activity that they do, delivery or transportation, not on the, on the camels themselves or on the animals. So first category is, you know, sold, being, you know, put in the market as a product to be sold, then they're going to be, the zakat will be, as the zakat of the business, inventory and evaluation and the, the value of the inventory and, you know, uh, inshallah, we're going to study all of the tijar. The second one is the farming part. The first subcategory of this, you know, the use of these uh, animals, these cattle, is even when is provided and fed you know, by the uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you can say if the word is correct. So fed by the by grass that no none of the effort was put in it. You pay zakat on it, and this zakat is going to be paid based on the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala way of He instructed us to do. And the Prophet taught us. So on the base of the number, how many how many you have? The second one, if someone, he's paying for the food or he's putting an effort to feed his cattle. That doesn't have the cat. The fourth one, where the animal or the cattle are used for, for a business or for, uh, you know, a tool of transportation or such a thing, then the zakat will be paid on the profit generated from the uh, activity of this business. Then, قَالَ يَجِبُ فِي إِبِلٍ وَبَقَرٍ وَغَنَمٍ تَجِبُ So, an obligation. A zakat is an obligation in camel, cow, and ghanam. Now, you see here, قَالَ إِذَا كَانَتْ سَائِمَةٍ So, the condition. إِذَا كَانَتْ سَائِمَةٍ So, from the categories that we mentioned, we only retain one category. السَائِمَةٍ السَائِمَةٍ the one who goes to the pasture and eat from the pasture. As-sa'ima. إِذَا كَانَتْ سَائِمَةً الْحَوْلَى أَوْ أَكْثَرَ If it's being fed by the, through, you know, a ra'i for a whole year or more, that's when you pay the zakat. When you say whole year, let's say they get the average. قال الحول أو أكثر. Or you know, you know, you have here to make that arrondissement, what they call it. So, أكثر or the 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 big part of the year. If they ate from the pasture for three months only, they're not sa'ima. Six months, they're not sa'ima. Nine months and more, that akhtaru sa'ima. Okay? The Dalil evidence is hadith Anas ibn Malik that we mentioned uh, written by Abi Bakr and sent to all the Umel to, to implement it. Qala wa fi al-ghanami fi sa'imatiha fi sa'imatiha concerning the ghanam among those who eat from the pasture the zakat is قَالَ وَفِي الْغَنَمِ فِي سَائِمَتِهَا So here we add it as 
as bayan to clarify which part of the cattle that they go to be part of the zakat or zakat is obligated on them. He said, As-sa'ima tu min bainihim. As-sa'ima. And of course, if uh, someone has, for example, goats or lamb for sale, and they eat from the pasture, will they pay zakat on them or not? Someone has a 500 goat. All of them, they eat in the, you know, just in the open land, in the pasture. And they are for sale. People, they come and they look, he wants this one, buy this, this one is buying 10, this one. Is this he pays a cat on them or not? Hmm? What type of the cat? Business the cat. So he gonna evaluate them as inventory, not as numbers. Because the other one is the farming one. That the numbers is the one that he used them to get milk, to have them treat them, you know, have, you know, more and growing the numbers. That's the one that you pay the care that you're going to study now. The other one is going to be considered as inventory. What? Now, we can tell you. Now that we define which category of the cattle that the zakat is going to be paid on and what are the uh, elements and characteristics around them, if you have this type of animal cattle, so know that in فَيَجِبُ فِي خَمْسٍ وَعِشْرِينَ مِنَ الْإِبِلِ بِنْتُ We start with the camel. In 25 from the camel, Bintu Mahad. Mahad. Bintu Mahad. A female Mahad. Call it Mahad. What the Mahad is. <clears throat> is Bakra. Bakra is the camel. The young baby camel. I mean, the young camel less than a year. Well, Mahadu is the pregnancy of the camel. So is the daughter of a, a pregnant camel. How do they call it? She was pregnant, so she's still, you know, just having this, this newborn female. Bin to Mahad. So Mahad means less than a year. Then, so this is for 25 camel, he will pay bin to Mahad. A young camel, a female young camel, less than a year. Qala, then. وَفِيمَا دُونَهَا مِنْ كُلِّ خَمْسٍ شَاتْ This then 25. قال وَفِيمَا دُونَ خَمْسٍ وَعِشْرِينَ فِي كُلِّ خَمْسٍ شَاتْ Less than 25. For every five, he will pay one goat, goat one shed. So the first five, he will pay one shed. The second five, a second shed. So five, one shed. Ten, two shed. Fifteen, three shed. 
24 shed, 25 female makhar, bintu makhar, female daughter of a makhar. In every five, one shed, when you get to 25, it turned to binti makhar. If he will pay five goats in 25, it's not, he didn't satisfy the condition. But if he pay binti makhar in less than 25, he will have satisfied. Why? Because binti makhar is higher. If you pay the higher, for the less required is accepted. But if you pay for the higher required, that less is not accepted. And there's no bargain. So once someone is collected, he said, you know, I give you five and uh, it's okay. There's no bargain. Say, no, 25, bin to Maha. Four shades. Now, the next bracket is 36. 36. A What is Labun? It's the one who didn't complete two years of age. And it's been called like this because most likely her mother now given milk. Because at this age, after giving birth to the baby camel, the other one was like she's got pregnant and she gave makhat, and then labun is like this is labun, which is uh, milk related to the mother. But this is they call it. They have this terminology: binti labun, a female labun or daughter Labun is the female camel who has less than two years. This is in how many camel? Huh? 36. Then we have the first bracket, 25, 5, 5, 5, 5, up to 20, and then 25. And then we have 36. Between 25 and 35, you don't pay anything. That's what we call it, they call it al-waqs. Al-waqs is the difference between the brackets that you don't pay. Rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that's you don't pay anything. So he has 25 he paid, bin to makhar. 26, 7, 8, 9, 30, 31, 2, 34, 35, he's not paying anything. He's still paying bin to makhar. When he get to 36, then he gonna have binti labun. See, even the, the bracket of the taxes they have here, they inspired from the zakat. <laughs> by the way, the algebra was, you know, invented by Khawarizmi. And he was inspired from al farail from the way of distribution of inheritance. That caution and, uh, you know, denominators and multiplication, that's existed before in the algebra, before the math. So al khawarizmi he inspired from the inheritance to put the basics of the algebra. And the zakat gives the whole base of the whole economy. It is actually the regulator of the economy, the zakat, in the Islamic system. The regulator of the system of economy that, you know, control the inflation and uh, promote the investment and all of that and have a circulation and this fair distribution of the income, the regulator is the zakat. Zakat 
which is rahma. So imagine zakat baraka, zakat increase, zakat purification. Let's regulate the system. What does regulate the system in the financial system of today? What is the regulator of the system today? Interest. That's what regulates the system. Increasing and decreasing the, inc the interest, that's what regulates the investment and control the inflation. So look the difference. A system the regulator is baraka, and a system the regulator is a profit made on money that it doesn't produce anything. So you give money and you want money from it. Uh, one of the scholars he said something nice. He said, someone is in need of a hundred dollars. Told him, okay, I'll give you a hundred dollars, I'll give you back a hundred ten. He said, I don't have the hundred. How can I give you the ten? I don't have the hundred, which is mean, as the scholar put it in a nice way, he said, so he has to steal ten dollars to give him back. So the system is based on <laughs> three dots, no comment. <laughs> it's very simple. Qala, uh, what do we have here? 36. Qulna binti labun. And al is the difference that it's free, no payment on it. Now, when it comes to the gold and silver, if you add a gram or half of a gram, zakat adds. Because on the value, you have the minimum, and every increment, every increase, it comes with the percentage. Because you have 2.5% on the value, on the amount you have. Here is different. Sorry. The gold and silver, there's no brackets. I can only say if you have $10,000, you pay this. And then when you reach to 20,000, you pay this. No. The minimum, you know, of saving for which the zakat becomes obligatory is, we said, 3,500, 2.5. And whatever you add is always multiplied by 2.5. Not the case of here. You have 25 and then 36. Between 25 and 36, whatever you have as camel, you don't pay anything on it. Now there's minimum of 35. I mean, we calculated. We said, Hamsi Awa, 85 gram of gold. Wafi Sitin wa Arbaina, Hokka. 46, we have Hokka. What is the Hokka? قال وفي ست وأربعين حقة وكسر الحاء هي عندي حقة الحقة هي الأنثى من الإبل التي تم لها ثلاث سنوات الحقة is the female camel who completed three years And the cameras at this age of three years, then they will be able to have, you know, to, to deliver, you know, camels. So this one is expensive. This is after 46. 46 is haqqa. And al the difference that is not, is free of any zakat, in this case, from 36 to 46 are nine. al waqsu nine. Nine are free of zakat. The next one, 
وفي إحدى وتس... وفي ست وفي إحدى وستين جذعة وفي إحدى وستين جذعة الجذع الجذعة four years completed four years الوقص the difference three of the cat are in this case fourteen sixty one minus forty six طيب then after sixty one we have ستين وسبعين ستين وسبعين seventy six seventy six the zakat for seventy six camel bin talabun bin talabun two labun two labun and what you say the labun the one who has two years An observation, the oldest to be paid for the zakat is al-jadha. And al-jadha, as we said, four years. And for the udhiyah of the camel, the one that can be offered as udhiyah is five years. So none of those pay of the zakat are valid for the Udhiyya. To make it easy on people. So, 76 it has two labun. And he has to be female. Because the female is more valuable and more costly than the male. Then, وفي إحدى وتسعين حقتان وفي إحدى وتسعين حقتان ninety one we have two حقة two حقة the one who has three years حقة the one who has three years. So we had we have ninety one. Now the next bracket is hundred twenty one. So from 91 to 120, there's no zakat paid on that, extra zakat. And here we have 29, 29 camel, no zakat on it. Then when the number reach 121 camel, thalath banati labun. Two, three female camel, two years age of age. After 121, for every, if the number is more than 121, for every 40 female laboon, and for every 50 ehaq. Every 40, laboon, every 50, hiq. Hundred thirty, what is the zakat of hundred thirty? Eight. 
every 40 لبون every 50 حق 130 one حقه two لبون one حقه 50 two لبون 80 80 plus 50 130 140 حقتان وبنت لبون وبنت لبون two حقه and one لبون I solve this one. 170. 170. 170. One hekka to the is going to be 80. Three. One hekka and three laboon. If you have 200, So here you can pay both. So, so Benati Labun or Arba Hukka. Five Labun or four Hukka. And so on. If someone, for example, he doesn't have, as we said, uh, the change. He has, for example, he doesn't have enough laboon to pay. For example, here he given us example. Man wajabat alayhi bint bint laboon walaysat inda. Someone he obligated, obligated to pay a laboon. A camel that has, how, how old is the laboon? Huh? Two years. Right? He doesn't have. وَعِنْدَهُ بِنْتْ مَخَاذ بِنْتْ مَخَاذ مَخَاذ how old? Less than a year. A year. Huh? أَنْزَلَ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّهُ يَدْفَعُ بِنْتَ الْمَخَاذ وَيَدْفَعُ مَعْهَا جُبْرَانَا He pay بِنْتَ الْمَخَاذ and then an extra to, to cover the difference. وَإِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ عِنْدَهُ بِنْتَ لَبُونَ وَعِنْدَهُ حِقَّةٌ He doesn't have bint labun two years, and he has one with three years. So he gives the three years, and he gets back the, the difference. So the worker who comes to collect the zakat, he give him back. قال يدفع الحقة ويأخذ الجبران from and so on if if you only have جذعة four years فلا يستحق جبران أكثر مما يستحق إلى آخره so the جبران can be based on the shat two shat or عشرون درهما or twenty درهم that's on the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم so they calculate in shat or in dirham. So it depends on the price and the value, uh, the value of the camel by age, and that's the differences. So uh, there will not, of course, a problem, as you know, it, it's solved by, by way of the transaction. This uh, jubran, you know, the jubran to, to cover the difference, is mainly in the Ibel because it's done in the Ibel in the time of the Prophet. Uh, any question? Yes, yes. Which one? No, it's an example. We give it an example. If he has to pay a laboon, 
and he doesn't have it, and he has a makhad. The makhad is, the value is less than the level. So he, he'll give the makhad, and he will cover the difference with shed. Oh. And if he has one, three years, hiqqa, he will give it, and he will get back the difference between al-labunu wal hiqqa. It depends. It depends. It depends. It depends on the society they live in, on the need of the economy, on the investment that they have. It depends. But usually, uh, you know, when the the one who has camels and everything, he will, uh, you know, he can sell them. And the value depends on the value of the market, depends on how it's evaluated, uh, you know, in the, in the system of the, of, the, of the authority. So it depends. It depends. As long as he pay it in whatever form they agree, he had paid and fulfilled his zakat. And the, um, also, it is recommended and obligated on the one who wants to pay the zakat to not give the best of what he has. And it's forbidden on the collector of the zakat to pick the best of what he has. Not give the one that almost gone to the slaughterhouse. That's, that's someone who wants to get rid of it. He's not seeking the pleasure of Allah. And the worker, he should not get that one because that's his, his heaven, you know, kind of, of something, deal under the table, and that's haram. Rashwa. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, do not take or let someone pay his karimati mer, the best of what he has. Why? Because if he has those camel who's given him milk and he's paying and the business is going and he's selling based on those milk, if he's going to give you, take from him that one, it's like you hurt his business. And he wants to so be generous, he's going to hurt himself. So he said, the Shia told him, you know, we don't take that. That's yours. We want you to be successful. We want you to be productive. That's why all of them young. So the older one are, you know, those who are producing. We take, you know, for example, he has laboon, many of them. We take only two in this case. We take here this. See the spirit of the Sharia? Even in the way of the Sa'ima. It's been amazing, yeah? SubhanAllah. Tanzeerun min Rabbil Alameen. أحكم الحاكمين وأرحم الراحمين. The مخاض who completed as we said uh, less than a year. Maximum is one year. No, maximum year because this baby, you know, that's, you know, she cannot even work. I mean, that's makhad, that's why we said it's like those newborn up to one year. It depends, Allah. Less than a year. The Maghrib prayer will be in six minutes. The other. Do you have any planning for your break? You wanna want to take the break after Maghrib or take it later? After Maghrib. Okay. Uh, then uh, the Maghrib will be finishing around 6.30. Will you wanna meet uh, 
What's that? Six fifty. Six fifty. Six fifty. We'll resume with Insha Allah Taala, Maqasid al Sharia. We'll finish when we come back with Maqasid al Sharia. Any question for these few minutes? So what the type of the uh, of the camel we have? Makhav, Labun, Hiqqa, Jada. What? One, two, three, four years. Who's the one who uh, can uh, able to deliver? Her name, Hiqqa. They call it Taruk. بارك الله فيكم وجزاكم الله خير. We'll meet you after the break إن شاء الله.